Good evening. Good evening. It is a great privilege to be invited here to speak in front of you. But uh, before we start, would you mind, brothers and sisters, I shall kneel and it's okay for you to bow down and I shall pray. Would that be okay? Hello. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of standing here in front of thine holy presence. At this very moment, Lord, I would like to appeal for forgiveness of my sin. Cleanse me and create in me a clean heart, O God, that we might be able to reach the hearts of our brethren and sisters that are here in this blessed church. Lord, please give us the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be manifested in simplicity and clearness. And please, Lord, we plead that ye soften the hearts of each and every audience. This we pray in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. It is a great privilege to be invited here to speak in front of you. Honestly, brothers and sisters, I have never imagined myself standing in front of you in this church. Number one, I am not a theological student, neither a pastor. I'm just a simple man. But I believe, brothers and sisters, though I shall not be fluent in speaking English, but I believe that if this is God's will, that I shall stand in front of you, the power of the Holy Spirit is enough to transcend any language barrier. Amen? There was once a study about the full animals of this world. Many scientists thought that they were able to discover all the animals, like lions, zebras, giraffes. But would you believe, brothers and sisters, at this very moment, there are many discoveries of animals that for the first time that have not yet been seen by any human. For example, have you ever seen a fish? Please answer me. Don't be too serious. Have you ever seen a fish? Yes. Have you ever seen the teeth of a fish? Recently, scientists was able to discover deep down in the Pacific Ocean, they were able to discover a fish that has a teeth, not of a fish, but a teeth of a human. Would you like to see it? Again, would you like to see it? Can you see it? Can you see the fish? Pwede po ba nating um, i ano po siya? I cannot be. Okay. On the other hand, they were good. They were able to see a lizard, but a different kind of lizard. Look at this. Can you see it? Another kind. Have you seen a crab? For the first time in their life, scientists was able to find a crab that looks like this. Could you please click? Click. It looks good, right? But honestly, recently, the most fascinating thing that they have discovered, they have found in the Red Sea a coral, but a different kind of coral. It looks like this. It's a different kind of coral. Why? This is a coral that doesn't 
um, that doesn't become big, but on the other way, it stands like that. One scientist, he tried to um, go near the coral, but he was so shocked, it was not a coral. When he touched the coral, he was able to see a wheel and an axle. And it was made of gold. The gold was so thin, even the wood inside the gold, because of many, many years, perished. And as they swam inside the sea, they see horse hoof, at the same time, human bones. Only to find out, brothers and sisters, they were at the very bottom of the Red Sea, were in, you remember when Moses crossed the Red Sea? You remember that? It was the actual place of the Red Sea. Until now, there is an underwater land bridge that God has made for the Israelites to be able to pass by the sea. Amazing, an another amazing story is that Noah's Ark. Do you know Noah's Ark was discovered recently? Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, at the same time, the Red Sea, all of these things were discovered by one man. His name is Ron Wyatt. And would you believe that Ron Wyatt is an Seventh-day Adventist? When many people were asking, why were you able to have these discoveries, he said, it is because of two things. Number one, I use the Bible as my guide. Number two, I always read the spirit of the spirit of prophecy. Brothers and sisters, as Seventh-day Adventists, we are blessed to have a lot of books that pertains to the last day events. Do you read the spirit of prophecy? Another example. Recently, there was a study of the longest people in the world, the longest living persons in the world. In fact, there was a person by the name of Marge Jeton. She was holding a card, the first card that was invented, the 4T model. How would you like this? After 100 years, this is what she looked like. And would you imagine, brothers and sisters, at the age of 105, every day she's doing bicycles. And at the same time, is doing weights. Can you do that? But there is a fascinating doctor by the name of Dr. Ellsworth Wareham. He's just 94 years old, but now he's 98 years old. Would you believe at that age he can dive and swim? At the same time, he can do operations and surgeries until now with a 2020 vision. Brothers and sisters, do you know and do you believe that all those old people are Seventh-day Adventists? Are you blessed being a Seventh-day Adventist? Are you blessed? Our family is a converted Seventh-day Adventist. My father is a former basketball player. I myself is a basketball player. But when we were introduced to this faith, we were so blessed. I realize how blessed it is to be a Seventh-day Adventist. Do you also believe the same thing? But brothers and sisters, according to um, councils and writers and editors, if you see the black, I will read it. And if you see the red, please read it. It says, the... Sabay-sabay po. The of truth ever entrusted to mortals, the most, and warnings ever sent by God to man have been committed to them, the Seventh-day Adventists, to, give, to be given to the world. Alam niyo mga kapatid, sa totoo lang, pasensya na ho kahit nagtatagalog ako. Napakalaking pribilehyo ng ang pamilya ho namin ay na-convert sa pagiging Seventh-day Adventist. Although sinasabi ng iba, although others are telling that there are many bawal, 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 but honestly, brothers and sisters, we realize that being a Seventh-day Adventist teaches you to be like Jesus. Amen? 
This one was written by a general conference writer, and this was written in 1950s, and I like it very much. You read the red, I read the black. We should be, we should be most, 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 most people in the world. When comes the Seventh-day Adventist will be and giants. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has given a last day church, a remnant church in the last days who will be like Jesus. Are you preparing every day to be like Jesus? Sa Tagalog po, mga kapatid, araw-araw ba nagiging katulad natin si Kristo? Are we going forward or are we going backward? But brothers and sisters, although as Seventh-day Adventists, we are given a high privilege and a lot of blessings from God. Honestly, like the Jews, sabi nga po sa spirit of prophecy, when you have greater light, if you do not live to that light, you will have greater condemnation. As Ellen White said, greater light greater damnation. It is like the Jews. The Jews are given by God as a peculiar people, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus. They are a peculiar people from the world. But how shocking it is that even the Jews who was chosen by God, they are the very ones that crucified Christ. Sa Tagalog, Ang mga Hudyo, binigyan ng Panginoon ng malaking pagpapala. Pero hindi ba't nakakagulat ang Hudyo rin pa mismo ang pumako kay Kristo? Alam niyo ba? Do you know, brothers and sisters, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, it is only Luke, a doctor, that wrote about something that came out from the pores of Jesus while he was praying intensely. And this is a medical condition that is very rare. If you will open your Bibles at Luke chapter 22, verse 44, it tells us, And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the... Mga kapatid, ang nangyayari ho dyan pagka if you are having sweat, sweaty blood, it only happens on rare cases when a person is undergoing extreme stress. What happens is, mga kapatid, pumuputok ho yung pores ng tao. Literally, the pores of the person explodes. Every pores explodes. And if you have hemohydrosis, that is what they call it, if blood comes out from your pores instead of Sweat, mga kapatid, sobrang lambot po ng balat ng tao. His skin will be very, very soft, which means konting pindot, konting, ano pong tawag dito mga kapatid? Ano pong tawag dito? Konting hawak, konting kurot, a pinch, or just a touch, it leaves a mark. After niyan mga kapatid, when Jesus was brought to Anas, when he was gotten for judgment, would you believe, brothers and sisters, while Jesus was sitting down, there was a man who did to him something. Let us read. John 18, 22. You will read the red. And when he had, when he had spoken, one of the officers which stood by stood by, struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest? Alam niyo, mga kapatid, when the angels saw, this is written in the story of redemption, when the angels saw that there was a man who struck Jesus on the fa face, slapped him on the face, ito po nangyari sa langit, mga kapatid. While in the guardroom, the rabble took license to manifest all the satanic elements of their nature. Imagine, 
Satan was concentrating his force on that judgment hall because he just needs one sin to destroy the story of redemption. And imagine, Satan's host in every person on that very time, all the barbaric way to destroy the person's credibility and integrity was forced by Satan. Ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, lahat ng makademonyong pag-iisip, barbarikong pamamaraan para saktan ng Panginoon, hindi po lahat nasulat sa Bible. But it was done to him. And sabi po dito, let us read. This are of ages. This is the first time that Jesus was... Um, I'll read. A? A? Please read the red. A? took possession of the people. The roar of voices was like that of the crowd made a rush toward Jesus, crying, He is guilty, put him to death. Had it not been for the Roman soldiers, Jesus would... Wow. To be nailed to the cross of Calvary, He would have been... Before his judges. While I was reading the spirit of prophecy through the desire of ages, it was my first time to look that at this very moment, not yet on the cross, not yet on the scourge, not yet on the thorn, not yet on Pilate's hole, at the very first onset of Christ inside the hole, he was about to die. I can imagine Christ being kicked on the legs. I can imagine Christ being mocked and spit And this is very nice. The story of redemption tells us it was for the to endure the sight. Wow. They would have. If you read the whole chapter of story of redemption, page 214, angels would like to come down. Why? Because Jesus is a God who cannot die. Jesus is omnipresent and omniscient and all-powerful. They cannot accept the fact that the God who, whom they kissed his feet is now being trampled by the persons who God wants to save. May isa pa hong nagugulat, mga kapatid. Even Satan was surprised. Why? Filled him, Satan, with amazement and with apprehension. He could not fathom the of this great Sacrifice. Imagine nyo mga kapatid, sorry for this Tagalog, kahit si Satanas ho nagugulat, bakit ginagawa ng Panginoon na nagpapakahirap siya para sa isang mga tao na matitigas ang ulo? On his selfish personality, Satan cannot grasp. Why is Jesus doing this for this kind of people? Why is he sacrificing his life for those people who are also persecuting him? A big question arises on Satan's mind. What a waste. But Jesus said in the spirit of prophecy, even there is one soul that he will save, he will come down. Amen po ba? And this is the most striking of all. There was a commotion of angels because of this text in the Bible. Luke chapter 22, verse 63 and 64. And when they had... They, on the, and ask him, saying, prophecy, is it that? Mga kapatid, imagine, Jesus was sitting, and they put blindfold. After they put blindfold, they struck him hard in the face. The desire of ages tells us that they, when struck him on the face, yung kamay po nung taong sumuntok, bakat na bakat sa mukha ni Jesus. What happened? Sabi po dito, there was... There was, when you say commotion, what does it mean? May kaguluhan. Among the angels, they would have rescued him instantly. If you will open your Bible at 1 Kings, one angel in one night can kill 132,000 people against the Midianite. Remember that. But with this, but their commanding angels, what? Restrained them. Angels wanted to go down. Angels wanted to rescue Christ. 
But their commanding angels still told them, I'm sorry, you cannot come down. The price of man and the price of Christ's sacrifice is too dear for him. It is only Christ alone that will finish this work. And sabi po mga kapatid, again, the, what, the like, like, the crowd darted upon their prey. Jesus was this way and that. Hinila-hila po ang Panginoon. Ito po yung second batch ng pangbubugbog po sa kanya. Ano po sabi? Herod joining the mob in seeking to humiliate the Son of God. Had not the Roman soldiers interposed and forced the, back the madded throng, the Savior would have been torn to pieces. Brothers and sisters, imagine this. Grasp this on your mind. At first, binugbog po siya. Nung nakakay Anas and, uh, Anas and Caiaphas po siya. Second, nung dinala po siya kay Herod, binugbog na naman po siya. Both too much. Both too much. Sabi po ng Panginoon, let us ask Jesus himself, Lord, during that very time, what happened to thee? Let us ask him, and this is what he will tell us. I gave my to the and my to them that the I hid not my face from and Jesus Christ is speaking brothers and sisters while he was there they plucked off his hair have you ever tried to pluck your hair what does it feel but imagine the whole beard of Jesus being plucked out how terrible is that and he was spit upon. Luke chapter 23, verse 16. I will therefore chastise him. When you say chastise, mga kapatid, ayun ho yung pinapalo sa likod. And when a person is being chastised, it looks like this. But with Jesus, it was different. There's no shorts. Jesus was naked. He was tied on the pole and he was naked. And there are ro two Roman soldiers, pinapalo po yung likod niya. And mga kapatid, the scourge looks like this. Could you grasp that? I will explain to you. Have you seen this rounded ball? That is a rounded metal ball. Have you seen this? That is broken glass. Rounded metal ball, broken glass, rounded metal ball, broken glass. And at the very end, brothers and sisters, there is a hook and a loop. So, when the Roman soldier would scorch Jesus, look at this. Remember, the skin of Jesus is soft because of hemohydrosis, which means earlier, blood came out from his pores. It was soft. Imagine. When the Roman soldiers scorched Jesus at the back, ang una pong tatama, mga kapatid, is the metal ball. What will it do? Gagawa po siya ng black eye or ng pasa. Pagkapit ng black eye o pasa, kakapit ang bubog. Pagkapit ng bubog, hahawak po yung nasa dulo na hook na may matalim na hook. So when they scorch him, pak, what will happen? Didikit po yung scorch. Pag dumikit ho yung scourge, ano hong gagawin ng Roman soldier? What will they do? Ihilahin po nila. And you will see the torn flesh in the air. And imagine, brothers and sisters, Jesus was scourged at the back for more or less 78 times. Take note. One slash can make up to 100 small holes. So it's probably 78 times, probably 8,000 holes at the back of Jesus. Imagine that. He was literally torn. And brothers and sisters, let us ask him again. 
Psalms 22, 17. Lord Jesus, what do you look like when you were scourged after? And Jesus will tell us, I may tell my day and upon me. Imagine, Jesus could look with all his bones at the back because it was so dilapidated and it was so destroyed. Do we praise God for this sacrifice? And Jesus gave us a picture of what his back looked like. Let us ask him again, Psalms 129.3. The plowers, could you please read? The plowers upon my, they made their, mga kapatid, pasensya na kayo, Tagalog ulit. Sino ho dito nakakita na sa magsasaka? Pakitaas po ang kamay. Sino ho dito ang nakakita na nagsasaka? Could you please raise your hands? Okay. Pagka nagsasaka po ang isang tao, when you are plowing, ang itsura po ng ground is smooth. But when you plow it, ano po ba itsura ng sinakang ground? Di ba ho, bako-bako, sira-sira? Dahil dito, Di ba ho yung dulo niyan, pag, when yung, yung cow, pagka daladala niya po, di ba ho sinisira yung ground? So probably the back of Jesus looks like this. A more terrible thing, an artist gets said, it's not like that, it's supposed to be. Eusebius Caesarea, Caesarea, an historian, tells us, let us read, you read the red. When a person is scourged, Sabi niya, the of the punished are exposed. The and the are also exposed. Imagine niyo ho yung hirap na pinagdaanan ng Panginoon, mga kapatid. And He was willing to undergo these things for you and for me. I said to the Lord, Lord, in one click, when Adam and Eve sinned, in one click, you can destroy us. But why is it that you have undergone the hardest way? And it is by sacrificing your life for us. Praise God. Amen po ba? Yeah, mga kapatid, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, this is not an ordinary verse. It tells us, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, look at this, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes. Mga kapatid, tinignan ko sa uh, Greek word, the stripes used here by Peter is molopes. And molopes means a blow mark, a singular word, which means... Sabi ni Peter, dahil nakita niya si Jesus, ang itsura ni Jesus parang isang malaking sugat. Dahil sa pinagdaanan niya. It's not just stripes. Sabi niya, ang itsura ni Jesus mukhang isang malaking sugat. If you see pictures of Jesus like that, an artist said it's not like that. It should be like this. But he was, but he was, for our, he was, for our, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his, we are him. There are many things that he undergo. We thought that it was just a crown of thorns, but many people, even Bible scholars, are tell us, telling us it was a helmet of thorns that they placed on the head of Jesus. Not an ordinary thorn, since one thorn, ang haba po is one to two inches. And when they place that thorn on the head of the punished, mga kapatid, they are forcing it to their thorns, to the head. May dalawang Roman soldier, nasa gitna si Jesus, they replace the thorn, and what they do is Meron po silang read, pipilitin po nila yan sa ulo ng tao. The spirit of prophecy is clear on this matter. 
Desire of Ages, page 734. Could you please read the red? Some wicked hand. The that had been placed in his hand and the upon his bro. The into his and sending the trickling down his face and his beard. Imagine, mga kapatid. Probably the head of Jesus looked like a matted, you know, isang basang-basahan na puro dugo. And we're not yet starting with the crucifixion itself, which time would not allow me to finish. I just told you, mga kapatid, the things that Bible scholars have researched but we're not yet starting with the actual excruciating pain of the cross. When a person is crucified on the cross, I'm sorry, hindi humasado makita, that person is naked. And the Roman soldiers were able to discover and to perfect the crucifixion. Why? When they use the nails, they do not break the bone. They were able to, they were able to see that there is a space in the hands Na wala pong buto, no bone, but only nerves, which is most painful. What they will do is they will center the nail, not on the bone, but on the nerves. Pinipilit po nila yan. The nerves is connected with the brain, and the nerves is connected with the spine. So when the person is crucified, a little movement is an excruciating pain that sends pain on the brain and the spinal cord and all the nerves. And brothers and sisters, imagine lahat po ito pinagdaanan ng Panginoon para po sa inyo at para po sa akin. Amen po ba? Amen po ba? I would like to read this before I finish. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. Moreover, brethren, I unto you the which I unto you, which also ye have received and were in ye, by which also ye are, if ye, what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Mga kapatid, mga kapatid, alam nyo ba, Nagulat ako, meron, there is one quotation in the spirit of prophecy that tells us, question, are all the things that Jesus have undergone, the spit on his face, the crown of thorns on his head, the scourge on his back, question, mauulit po ba ito ulit? Will this be repeated? Do not look at me. Answer. Will this be repeated? Yes or no? Yes or no? I would like to ask the persons here. Yes or no? What? What? No. How about here? Yes or no? Yes, no? Let us read. The spirit of prophecy is very clear. The betrayal rejection, and crucifixion of Christ have been reenacted and on an immense scale. When I was reading this, it was a great puzzle to me. You mean to say that Jesus again will be crucified on the cross? It's already finished. And I realize as I study, it will again happen on an immense scale. You know how? The Bible and the spirit of prophecy is clear on the person who will crucify him again. Let us read. That person is in the worst position. Why? He stands in a worse position, the one that will crucify God again, than those who have been given so many, which means the person that will crucify Jesus again 
this person is given by God and Jesus Christ so much benefit and advantage, a great amount of truth. Who is this person? This person is called by the spirit of prophecy the most guilty of contempt. It says, of all sinners, he is the most guilty. Why? who cast contempt upon the means that heaven has provided for man's redemption. And this person is worse than an infidel. Why? He is worse than an infidel. Satan uses him to do a work that no one else can do. My question is, who is he or who is this person that will crucify Jesus again? Who is this person that will mock Jesus again? That will spit on his face? That will kick him in the face? That will pull his beard? Kilala niyo ba mga kapatid kung sino pong papako ulit sa Panginoong Jesus sa panahon po natin ngayon? Do not look outside of the church. Do not think of other persons. Pero alam niyo ba mga kapatid? Do you know who will crucify Jesus again? Do you have any guess? Believe it or not, he and she is here. Let us ask the prophet. You read the red, I will read the black. Messages to young people, page 129. I'm almost done. As I saw the... Mga kapatid, pakibasa niyo naman po yung pula. We're almost done. As I saw the... Dreadful fact. Why? That God's people were conformed to the... Wow. With no... Except in between the disciples of the meek and lowly Jesus and unbelievers, my soul felt deep. I saw, look at this, I saw that Jesus was and put to on. Mga kapatid, ang papako po ulit kay Jesus, ang dudura, ang maglalagay ng koronang tinik, ay tayo po mismo. Do you agree with that? Every sin that we cannot overcome before Jesus comes is a nail on His hands and a nail on His feet. Every sin that we commit outside of the church, the people of the world will laugh at us and scorn at us, telling us these people are holding their Bibles every Sabbath. They are preaching in front. They are always praying in view of many people, but their hearts are unclean in the sight of God. Alam niyo mga kapatid kung saan po natin napapako ang Panginoon, lalo na po sa kabataan ngayon? Here. You know that picture? You know that picture? Do you agree, brothers and sisters, especially of the youth of today, that we crucified Christ and put Him to open shame through this? Number one, if you have a relationship with an unbeliever, do you know that is, in the eyes of God, an adultery? Number two, especially with men and women relationship, don't you know that men should be very cautious on touching women? Peter is very clear and Paul, it is better for a man not to touch a woman, to flee from fornication. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid? pinapahiya natin ang Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng mga relasyon na humahawa ka, you are embracing an opposite sex which is not your husband or your wife. In the eyes of God, that is fornication. You agree with me? The spirit of prophecy is very clear. When men and women under the blazing light of the truth of God be seen of God who are committing fornication, the prophet is very clear. She said, I believe 
that God will separate them from His work forever. And also the spirit of prophecy is clear. If men and women commit adultery or fornication outside marriage, I am sorry, but their sin is ten times more grievous than the outside world. Hindi po ba isang nakakalungkot na bagay na tayo po Seventh-day Adventist mga kapatid tas mababalitaan mo may nabubuntis ng labas sa pag-aasawa? Amen? Mga kapatid, it tells us, alam niyo po ba, in the whole Southeast Asia, the highest na marami pong bata na nabubuntis or pregnancy rate is in the Philippines. Is this shocking? Yes. But it is more shocking when there are Seventh-day Adventists on that list. Amen? That is why as men and women of God, we should act more noble with the opposite sex. We have a lot of books pertaining to social reform. What does, it, what does this mean? On how we deal with the opposite sex. Alam niyo ba mga kapatid, pati po sa mga lalaki, sabi po ng Spirit of Prophecy and the Bible, one of the greatest crime in the sight of God is trifling with hearts. You know what trifling with hearts mean? Halimbawa si kuya, nakita maganda si ate, niligawan niya. Pagkatapos niya niligawan, nakita naman niya si ate, mas maganda pa, niligawan niya rin. Yung pangako niya dito, pangako niya rin doon, pangako niya rin doon, at ang dami niyang girlfriend. Do you know that is sin against God? Sino po dito ang ganun? Taas ang kamay. Next. You know that? You know that? What's that? What's that? Pakilakas naman no, matatapos na ako. What's that? Huh? One way of crucifying Christ afresh is by the way we dress. Brothers and sisters, if you will read your Bible on Numbers 15, the Lord wants Israel to put a ribbon of blue at the borders of their dress. What is the purpose? It tells us in Numbers 15, so that when they look at the border of their dress, it will be reminded of them of the law of God because the law of God is color blue, sapphire blue, which means when you dress, your dress should speak of the law of God. Amen? But there are many women, even inside the church. I could understand if women outside the church, outside of this school, in Tagaytay, in Skyruns, or whatsoever, they will, will this, they will wear that heels that are this thick. And imagine, brothers and sisters, if a woman wears a heel that high, I tell you, there is something with her body that happens. What is it? When you wear a high heels, gaganon po yan. Lalabas to. You agree with me? And men like women figures. It will create a muscle here in lalabas to. So when the woman wears that, she looks like this. And when she walks, she's like a duck. They agree with me. And brothers and sisters, the spirit of prophecy is very clear. The index of what you wear is the reflection of your character. Amen po ba? If men and women will dress like the world, what is our difference from the world? If the Lord himself is very much particular by the way we dress, is it a surprising fact Yung miniskirt sa labas, nakikita mo na rin sa loob ng church? Yung nakikita sa labas, dahil madalas po kami sa Tagaytay, one of our customers is John. Yung nakikita ko sa labas na nandito, nagiging ordinary na lang sa loob ng iglesia natin. I believe, brothers and sisters, that this is a holy place. Do you agree with me? And the power of God is manifested in this pulpit. If God who is holy without iniquity and without filth. Do you think, brothers and sisters, when he sit down here and we, he saw a woman who's wearing high heels or a dress that's like this or like that, do you think that he will allow that? I beg to disagree, but it's very clear. It is not. 
Let us remember that in Proverbs 7, a harlot is known by her dress. You agree with me? Sa Tagalog, ang isang patotot, ang isang prostitute, ang isang babaeng mababa, ang lipad, malalaman mo, hindi sa salita, kung hindi sa pamamagitan ng, ng suot. You compare the women of Revelation 12 and the woman of Revelation 13. The undefiled woman is a pure woman with a long robe. But the undefiled woman, ano? Kita ho yung mga kung ano-ano. Amen po ba? Last, if you will read your Bibles, Revelation 12, Revelation 13, the beasts are the only ones with, what do you call this? What do you call this? Horns. Sa Tagalog, ang mga hayop ng Revelation 13 at Daniel 2 ang may mga sungay. Tama po ba? But would you believe, brothers and sisters, at this very day, there are, I could see still, in the church, meron pong mga sungay. You agree with me? Tingnan niyo po ito. May sungay. May pinausap pa ho yung iba. Sungay na may kulay. I tell you, brothers and sisters, who is the man that has the longest hair in the Bible? Uh, no, no, no. Who is the man that his strength is dependent on his hair? Who is he? Who is he? Samson. But would you believe, mga kapatid, okay lang ho bang may Tagalog ng konti? Okay lang po ba? Okay lang ba? Hindi ko ho ma-express yung sarili ko. But would you believe, brothers and sisters, the patriarchs and prophets is clear, if Samson is still um, loyal to God, even if a person cuts his hair, but he remains loyal, even they take off whole, whole, the whole hair, he will still be strong. What does it mean? His hair is the sign of his loyalty to God. Ito po sabi mga kapatid. There was no virtue in his long hair, merely. But it was a token of his to God. Brothers and sisters, especially the men and also the women, your hair inside the church connotes in, is an index of your loyalty to God. That hair is nice. That hair is proper. But if you put different colors of hair, or the men, may mga lalaki ho, isang sungay, may nakita ko, dinalawa yung sungay, may nakita ko, dinamihan yung sungay. Is that acceptable? Well, to God, I believe and I beg to disagree. Do you want me to continue or to finish? Continue? Continue? I would, I would like to see hands. If you raise your hands, I will continue. But if not, I will finish. I'll go back to Manila. Continue, raise your hands. If there is one hand that doesn't raise, I won't continue. Very good. Last. One way of crucifying Christ afresh. If you do not believe me, wait till we read what is written in the spirit of prophecy. If you are a person, alam nyo mga kapatid, usong-uso ho ang bagay na ito. Ang tawag po nila, anong tawag nila dito? Anong tawag nila? Selfie. Pag marami, alam na alam. Pero iba-iba ang selfie. There is a selfie that is pulling the hair, but there is selfie what they call broken neck, but there is a selfie that they call angry look, and the worst kind of selfie is the akala mo hindi ka nakatingin pero pinikturo mo lang sarili mo. They agree with that. But would you believe, brothers and sisters, the American Psychiatric Association makes it official those people who like selfie has a mental disorder. Why? They have a narcissism. If you are a person who likes to click, click, click on your face, they call it extreme self-centeredness. Remember in Ezekiel 14, it is the downfall of Satan because of self. Nebuchadnezzar for seven years was like a beast because of self. Ano po sabi ng spirit of prophecy? Let us read. I hope you can see. This is very nice. You read the red. A species of this and 
is a species of Satan is doing all he can to eclipse heaven from our view. Which means, in these last days, one of Satan's trap to distract the people of God is through pictures. Is that clear? Let us not help him by making... We need to reach a higher than this human face suggests. The Lord says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Those who claim to believe in Christ need to realize that they are to reflect His image. And the way to reflect His image, it is His likeness that is to be kept before the mind. Mga kapatid, kaysa tignan, tignan nyo nang tignan yung picture nyo ng boyfriend nyo, ng kung sino-sino, pati pagkain nyo, pinipicturean ninyo, huwag na lang po yun ang tignan nyo. Ang sabi ho ng Panginoon, itutok mo yung isip mo sa Panginoong Jesus. Amen po ba? That is why it is written in 1 John chapter 5, verse 21, Little children, keep yourselves from... How about this one? What is that? What is that? Do you agree, brothers and sisters, that we could crucify Christ afresh by the way we eat? Do you agree, brothers and sisters, the food on the table, according to the spirit of prophecy, is an index if you are a people of the world or of God? Amen. Last. Alam po ba ninyo yan, mga kapatid, sa mga bata? How about this one? Are you enjoying this one? Are you enjoying this one? I'm not sure kung may ganito pa ho. But how about this one? Are you still enjoying this one? Alam niyo yung Dragon Ball. Si Goku hindi mamatay-matay. At pag nagagalit, tumatayo ang buhok, nagiging dilaw. Brothers and sisters, if you will look deep at this study, it is against the doctrine of the seven-day Adventists and the true doctrine of God. It is immortality of the soul. And if you will look at this Harry Potter, brothers and sisters, Deuteronomy 18 tells us that it is an abomination to God, yung mga witches. It is unacceptable in the sight of God. Yan nga po sabi nito mga kapatid, before I finish, I will read. As a people, we are to stand firm on the platform of eternal truth that had withstood test and trial. This is very nice. We are to hold to the sure pillars of our faith. The principles of truth that God has revealed to us are, are our only true foundation. Could you please read one, two, three? Excuse me. They have made us what we are. Ang ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, yung kaibahan natin sa mundo, sa pananamit, sa pagkain, sa pagpunta sa mga panglilibang, ito ang nagpapahiwatig ng kaibahan natin at kung sino tayo sa labas. In English, our peculiarity as a people of God stands in fall on how we follow the law of God. Amen po ba? But brothers and sisters, if the barrier and the gap between the children of God and the world has been destroyed, the children of the world are enjoying the food of the world. And we go, you go to other youths, they also enjoy the food of the world. The children of the world dress like the world. And when you see the children of the church dress like the world, they talk like the world. They go to places that worldly people go. I believe what Sister White told us, these are just, the difference is just the name. I believe, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Do you agree with me? Amen? And Jesus Christ has suffered so much to save us. As a people of God in these last days, it's either make or break on our part 
let us remember that Jesus Christ is in the most holy place, pleading for every Seventh-day Adventist. This is the right time for us to develop our characters. This is the right time for us to go back from what we are and to neglect, forget the things of the world. Mga kapatid, araw-araw po ba nagiging ganyan tayo? Before I finish, I would like to finish with a story. There was once a story in Palawan. Alam niyo ba yung Palawan, mga kapatid? Are you familiar with Palawan? There were two itas, a father ita and his son. They go to the depths of Palawan to swim. Surprisingly, while he was at the bottom of the sea, he saw this white, large stone. It looks like, probably it's like this. What he did was, he got the stone out of curiosity because the stone is different from other stones. So when he went home, he gave the stone to his child. And what the child did was, wow, this is a peculiar stone. What he did was, he displaced it there, make it as a softball, make it as a soccer, just play with it every time and leave it outside. Then one time, there was an American. And he saw the stone, a tourist. And he has this interest with the stone. He said to the father, Sir, could I buy that stone? And the father said to his mind, Wow, kikita pa ako ng pera sa bato. And then tourist said to him, Sir, how much would you like to sell the stone? Ang sabi po nung ita, Sir, I will sell it to you for five pesos. Ang nasa isip po nung ita, wow, kikita pa ako. So he gave it. Dinala po nung American sa States. Pagdala niya po sa States, after two months, three months, just an interest at the back of his mind, hawak niya yung bato, pinacheck niya po yung bato sa National Museum. Alam niyo mga kapatid kung ano ho yung bato? Uy, sumagot kayo, huwag kayong tumingin. <laughs> Lahat kayo kanina pa nakaganon. Mga kapatid, alam niyo ho kung ano yung bato? Ha? Huh? They were so shocked. Why? The stone was not a stone. It was one of the biggest pearl in the world. They call it the Pearl of Lao Tzu. In 1992, it was estimated to be worth $72 million. It looks like this. It looks like this. It really looks like this. In 1989, Osama bin Laden went to purchase that to Ferdinand Marcos for $5 million. But now, the estimated worth is probably $100 million. Brothers and sisters, if you are the Ita father, and then, magkano niya po binenta, mga kapatid? How much? And what is the value now? Imagine. The child was just kicking the pearl. He thought it was the stone, but a pearl. How about us, the remnant people of God? God has given us so much privilege that sometimes we do not understand. And we treat it like just a stone we kick it. We just place it there because you were born an Adventist. But brothers and sisters, what if one day you will realize that the truth that you are just kicking it's life and death for the persons outside. Amen po ba? This has been my prayer. Mga kapatid, alam niyo ba? Galing pa ho kaming Manila. Hindi ko ho trabahong magsalita. Hindi po ako pastor. Negosyante po ako. At bawal po ako magsalita. May tama po ang joko. Have you seen my... Have you seen my... Ano ba tawag? Splint? I'm not allowed to speak. I have a big problem with my jaw. But when Pastor Jaisal Martinez called me yesterday, the other day, and she said to me, I have to speak. And she said to me, you don't have to be worried. Uh, sabi ni Maki, konti lang naman ang tao. Marami rin po pala kayo. 
And I believe, brothers and sisters, this is not dependent of you are a pastor. But as long as God called you to stand in that, I believe you have to do your part. Amen po ba? At this very moment, I hope each and every one of you are blessed. I glorify God and I thank Him for this privilege. May we praise God. Amen po.